Your Honor, your clerk wanted us to clarify one thing. I talked to Mr. Sneddon, if we could do that. Yes. With regard to Exhibit 5004, those were the cards that we showed on the screen. Yes. And I said at the time I showed them that I believe there were three cards. It turns out, when we had the actual paper, there are four cards. However, these pages in this 5004 are all of the pages that were shown on the screen. It is the same thing. It's just there are actually four separate cards, instead of three. All right. And Mr. Sneddon, I believe, agrees with that. I do. And we'll then give this back to your clerk. Thank you, counsel. Ready, your honor. Gavin, we were talking before the break about the bottle? Yes. Okay. Did you ever take that to the doctor's appointment? Yes. And do you recall who went with you? I know that Vinny, my mom and me went, but I don't know if anybody else went. And do you recall at the time that you left to go to the doctor's appointment, how much pee you had put in the bottle, just generally? It was filled up all the way to the top. And when, when you got in the car, where did you sit in the car? I sat right behind my mom. My mom was in the passenger seat, so. And who was doing the driving? Vinny. And at some point between the time you left the ranch with Vinny and your mother, well, let me go back. Who had the bottle? It was, like, sitting, it was on the floor in front of my mom. Now, at some point on the, and when you left the ranch and before you got to Kaiser, did you stop for any reason? Yeah, I needed to pee. And so where did you go? Do you remember where you stopped? I think we stopped at a Denny's. And you went inside? Yes. Do you know whether or not your mother went inside? Yeah, I'm pretty sure my mom went inside with me. Now, at any time during that trip, did you hear some conversation about the contents of that bottle in front of you with the pee? Yes. Objection. Leading. Overruled. Yes. And with regard to that conversation, who spoke first, do you recall? I think it was my mom. Do you recall what she said? She said the bottle was empty. And was this before you actually got to the hospital itself and went inside? When? If you can answer, yes, or, no, first. Yes. Okay. Now, where was it when that conversation occurred? Well, it was. We were pulling up to the curb right next to the hospital entrance, and I think my mom was about to pick it up to go inside the hospital, and I think that's when she figured out that the bottle was empty. Did you actually handle the bottle at any time after that? When she said it was empty, did you pick it up yourself? No. Did you go into the hospital with your mother? Yes. Did Vinny go with you? No, I don't think so. I think he went to go park the car or something. I want... Let me grab that out of the way for just a second. That's not been admitted yet. Were you offering it, or not? I am, your honor. I thought we did. I'm going to object, your honor. Because the witness did not say that was the actual bottle he used. They can't hear you back there. The witness did not state under oath that's the actual bottle he used. I believe Mr. Sneddon presented it like a bottle that supposedly looked like it. Well, may I be heard on that, your honor, before you rule? Yes. Your honor, you're allowed to use exhibits, even if they're not exact ones, that are illustrative of the ones that were used. And I believe the witness has established that this was like the one that he used. You don't need to bring in the exact one that was used. What if it was destroyed? You don't need to do that. Okay, I'll take that under advisement. Thank you. All right. Gavin, I want to go back for just a second. Do you remember me asking you questions about Mr. Jackson coming up the stairs? Yes. And the time that you said he was naked? Yes. And I asked you whether or not he said anything to you at that particular point in time? Uh-huh. And you said you didn't recall anything? I do not. Do you recall testifying at the grand jury? Yes. You testified there a couple of times, did you not? Yes. One time that I asked you questions and one time that Mr. Zonin did? Yes. Would it refresh your recollection if I showed you what you said to the grand jury about that incident? Probably. Objection. Objection. You have to go. 
Improper question. He can't coach the witness like that, your honor. I agree. I can't refresh his recollection, your honor. Not till he says he doesn't recollect. I do not recollect. Laughter. Oh, that's it. He already said that. Now may I approach the witness? No. Sorry. Do you have a recollection of what you told the grand jury? About that situation. Yeah? I don't recollect anything that he said when he came up there. Do you recall what you told the grand jury about that? No. Would it refresh your recollection if you were able to see what you told the grand jury? Yes. I'm going to object, your honor. This is highly improper. He's trying to coach the witness with a transcript. The. You can't just lead him along and say. It's not clear to me what you're asking about that he doesn't recollect, so. I'll go back and do it again, then, your honor. Gavin, with regard to that portion of your testimony, when you indicated to this jury just a little while ago that you had no recollection of what Mr. Jackson said when he walked in front of you naked, do you recall that? Yes. Well, he didn't really walk. He just came up the stairs. He came up the stairs? Yes. And you saw that he was naked? Yes. And I asked you if you recall whether he said anything to you. Do you recall that, in front of this jury here? Yes. And you said you did not? Yes. Now, did you testify? Objection. Leading. They're all leading questions. Move to strike. It's foundational to whether. Overruled. The next question is. You interrupted me. I forgot, judge. All right. I think I can. Would you like the court reporter to read it back to you? I don't think I got it out. It was one of those senior citizen moments. I do want the last question read back. Thank you. If you don't mind. Record read. Thank you. Did you testify to an incident before the grand jury with regard to Mr. Jackson coming in? I believe I did testify about that. And did you tell them what he said? Do you recall? I don't recall him saying anything. Would it refresh your recollection if you were able to look at that testimony? Yes. Same objection. You may. You may show him the testimony to see if it refreshes his recollection. Thank you, Your Honor. Counsel, page 424, lines 1 to 3. Gavin, I'm going to show you this and, and I just want you to read it to yourself. Don't say anything about it. Okay? All right. Actually, counsel, I'm looking to start on the lines before, just so he gets the whole incident. I'll start at line 24. All right. Having read your grand jury testimony, does that refresh your recollection as to what you told the ladies and gentlemen of the grand jury? Yes. What did you tell them about whether or not the defendant made any statements? Oh, we were sitting on the bed. When me and my brother were, e e u u w w, that's when Michael said, it's okay, that it's natural. And I remember that by reading the grand jury testimony. So that refreshed your recollection? Yes. I want to go back and just ask one or two questions about your homework, and then we'll move on to another subject. Okay. The books that you have in front of you there, in the exhibit, I think it was 349. 348. What is that? We don't have the bag? Oh, yeah, it was in the brown bag. Madam Clerk, could you help me with that? Somehow the tag must have come up. I'm sorry, what was that? It's the one with the homework in it. That's 348. The sticker must be, I have it. It was stuck to some plastic. All right, with regard to the items, 348, that are in front of you, some of those items that are in front of you look like you have some writing on them. Did you ever do any homework while you were at Neverland? I think I, like, started and never. I can't hear you. I probably started, like, one assignment, and then never finished it, and then went and played some more. I can't hear you. I think I just started like one, like, homework, but I didn't finish and just went and played some more. Now, on the rebuttal video, do you remember that? Yes. Do you remember somebody making a comment about Mr. Jackson helping with their homework? Yes. Did he ever help you with your homework? Yeah, I think that was the time. Like, I was in his room. You were in his room? Yeah. And he helped you? 
Well, for that part. And then we started, like, playing around. Alright, I'm going to show you some photographs. This is the last bit of photographs. And I'm almost done. Okay? Okay. I'm going to show you the photographs that are marked as 76, 77, 78, and 79 okay. Okay. In evidence. Alright, the first one on top is 77, correct? Number 76. 76. Alright, go ahead and put it up on the board. With regard to the photograph, 76, is that the one that's up on the board? Yes. Alright, do you recognize that? Yes. What is that? That's Michael's bed. And with regard to this particular photograph, you've told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let me strike that. Start over again. You told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that at times that you were with Mr. Jackson and you were in that bedroom and you drank alcohol? Yes. Do you see any places in that photograph where you used to put the alcohol? On the sides of the bed. What do you mean, on the side of the bed? There's a little laser up there. Can you show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? No, there isn't. Okay, go ahead. He would sometimes put the wine bottles on the sides of the bed. I think I put it one time on this ledge, but it didn't really work too good because of all this stuff here. Now, is there anything in this particular photograph that you see that's different than when you were there? Yeah, that crib. The crib wasn't there. And then this computer wasn't there. Those are on the far right hand side of the exhibit, 76. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Let's go to the next photograph. Do you recognize that photograph? What number is that, by the way? 77. All right. Do you recognize that? Yes. It's the same room. Pardon? It's the same room. All right. And was there anything in that particular photograph that's different from when you were there? There. I'm pretty sure there was a desk right here. And hey, there's the vacuum. But the crib was right here, and then, I mean, the crib wasn't there, and the computer wasn't there. All right. Now, would you hold the spot where you thought there might be a desk right by where that silver case is on the floor in the yellow bag? Yes. Let's go to the next photograph. Now, do you recognize that? Yes. And that photograph is what number? 78. All right. And I want to show you the next one, and then I'm going to ask you some questions about both of them. What's the next photograph you have? 78. And the next one? Oh, 79. All right. Now, do you recognize 79? Yes. Okay. Now, you have 78 and you have 79 in front of you? Yes. Okay. Which, where was the table that you were talking about with the computer that didn't work? Right here. All right. I'm going to take this little, okay. You can take this pen and sort of draw where it is that you saw the table, where you believe the table was, on the photograph. And would you put your initials on that, please? Just somewhere on the photograph? Your Honor, we're going to transition to the Elmo for just a second. We're done with this, Your Honor. So we want to go to the, is it the same input? The input is, 4. We've got it, Your Honor. Up on the board is the photograph I asked you to mark, correct? Yes. And the, ga, that's your initials? Yes. And the area that's in black represents what? That's the little, where the desk was. Now, do you see where you put the, ga, in the white area there? Yes. What is that? That's like, kind of like a movie screen thing. And then, oops, sorry. And then there's, then we would direct all the movies that we would watch onto that screen. Turn around and look into the microphone, if you can, for me. With regard to that screen, was that screen there when you were there? After we came back from Miami, yes. All right, go ahead and turn the lights on. Now, Gavin. Yes. At any time while you were at Neverland Ranch, did Mr. Jackson ever touch you inappropriately? Yes. All right, how many times? What I saw in my memory is only twice, but, I mean, there's, like I kind of feel it was more than twice, but, I mean, the only times that I saw in my mind that he did it was only twice. All right, tell us about the first occasion. The first time, well, my brother stopped sleeping in our room with us. You're going to have to slow down and talk right into that mic now. I know you're nervous, but go ahead. My, my brother had stopped sleeping in our room and...
Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. I'll lay some foundation, your honor. Stricken. Gavin, the first time he touched you, where were you? What room? We were in his room. Where were you in his room? On the bed. Was there anybody else present besides you and Mr. Jackson? No, I think it was only us. Now, you told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that on many occasions, that you and your brother and Mr. Jackson shared a bed in his bedroom, correct? Yes. On this particular occasion, had your brother Star been with you and Mr. Jackson in bed before that? Before this. Objection. Leading. That's a terrible question anyhow. I'll withdraw it. Was there a period of time where your brother Star stopped sleeping with you and Mr. Jackson? Yes. Objection. Leading. Overruled. The answer was, yes. And was it before or after the time that Mr. Jackson touched you for the first time? When my brother stopped. Yeah? It was before, because he stopped sleeping in our room, in the room. All right. Tell the jury how it came about that you and Mr. Jackson were in bed together and what you were doing. Well, we were, well, we just had come back from drinking a lot in the arcade, and it was. Doing what? Drinking in the arcade. Can you pull that down just a little bit? There. Okay. Go ahead. We just came back from drinking in the arcade, and then we went up to his room. And then we were sitting there for a while, and Michael started talking to me about masturbation. So you were in the room for a while and the defendant started talking to you about masturbation? Yes. What did he say to you? He, he told me, he said that if men don't masturbate, that they can get to a level where they can, might rape a girl or they might be, like, kind of unstable. So he was telling me that guys have to masturbate. And he told me a story that. Objection. Non-responsive. All right. We'll stop right there. Okay. What else did he say to you? He told me a story of he saw a boy one time, he was looking over a balcony or something, and he saw a boy who didn't masturbate and he had sex with a dog. Did he tell you anything else during this conversation? That particular section, or... Yeah, I mean, did he tell you anything else? He told me that boys had to masturbate, or males have to masturbate. Okay. They cannot hear. They couldn't hear what you had to say, Gavin. I know it's hard. Lean right into it. He told me that males have to masturbate. All right. Now, when he said that, what, if anything, did he do or say after that? He said that if I masturbated, and I told him that I didn't. And then he said if I didn't know how, that he would do it for me. And what did you say? And I said I didn't really want to. All right. And then what happened? And then he said it was okay, that it was natural, and that it's natural for boys to do it. All right, what happened after that? And then so he, we were under the covers, and I had his pajamas on, because he had this big thing of pajamas and he gave me his pajamas. Okay. And so I was under his covers, and then that's when he put his hand in my pants and then he started masturbating me. Could you see Mr. Jackson while he was doing that to you? Not really. I wasn't really looking at him. Could you tell whether or not he was moving? Well, he was, he was himself. Yes? I wasn't really looking at him. All I could, I could kind of feel him moving, but, I mean, I never really saw him moving. Do you know approximately how long Mr. Jackson masturbated you? Maybe five minutes, I guess. Did, do you know what an ejaculation is? Yes. And did you have an ejaculation? Yes. Did Mr. Jackson say anything to you afterwards? I kind of felt weird. I was embarrassed about it. And then he said it was okay, that it was natural. Did anything else happen that evening between you and Mr. Jackson? No, we just, after that, we just, he tried to say that it was okay and that, kind of like to comfort me, because I felt weird. I felt weird about it. And then after a while, we just went to sleep. Was there any other occasion where Mr. Jackson touched you? Yeah. When was that? Well, there was about a day after that, he did it. He did it one more time. All right. Where were you? In his bed. And was it daytime or nighttime? It was nighttime. And who else was? Was there anybody else present besides you and Mr. Jackson? No. 
And what were you doing up in his bedroom at this point in time? Well, we just came back from the arcade again, and then we went up to his room. And then we were sitting, I think we were watching TV or something, and then we were on top of his covers, and he did it again. How were you dressed on this occasion? In his pajamas again, because I would always use his pajamas. All right, and how was Mr. Jackson dressed? Do you remember? He was in his pajamas, too. Now, with, tell us what happened. The same thing happened again. And he said that he wanted to teach me. And then we were laying there, and then he started doing it to me. And then he kind of grabbed my hand in a way to try to do it to him. And I kind of, I pulled my hand away, because I didn't want to do it. Did Mr. Jackson say anything before he reached over and grabbed your private parts? He would always say that it was natural and, don't be scared, and it was okay. Now, how long do you think it lasted the second time? The same time. Did you ejaculate the second time? I think I did. Now, when was it, at point in time, that Mr. Jackson reached over and grabbed your arm? Maybe like halfway through it. Did you say anything to him when you pulled your hand away? I said that I didn't want to. Did Mr. Jackson say anything to you? I don't think he did. Were there any other occasions where Mr. Jackson tried to do something to you that you felt was inappropriate, that you remember? No. Nothing further, Your Honor. Cross-examine. Gavin, my name is Thomas Mesereau and I speak for Mr. Jackson. Okay? Okay. I'm on his side, all right? All right. Not the government. I'm on Mr. Jackson's side. Okay. We've never spoken before, right? No. We've never met, right? No. If I ask you any question and you don't understand the question, just say so. Don't answer it, okay? Okay. If something seems unclear, just say, it's unclear, I don't understand it. Okay, and I'll try and rephrase it? Okay. Now. You've told the jury that it was not till after your interview with three social workers that any inappropriate touching happened, right? Hmm. Did you tell the jury that it was not until after your interview with three social workers in Los Angeles? Yes. That Mr. Jackson inappropriately touched you? It was after. It was after, right? Yes. Now, in that interview, you told the three social workers that Mr. Jackson was a good guy, right? Yes. You said he had been like a father figure to you, right? Yes. You said he had helped you with your cancer, correct? Um, I don't know in that interview if I did. But I just said he was a good guy. You said a lot of good things about him, true? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, now, that was the point in time where you claim that Mr. Jackson wanted your family to go to Brazil, right? I don't know if I told the social workers that we were going to go to Brazil. I don't think I did. But your statement about Mr. Jackson and Frank wanting you to go to Brazil was before or after the three social workers interviewed you. The statement to who? You said that Mr. Jackson said something about wanting you to go to Brazil, didn't you? Yes. And when was that, approximately? When Michael wanted me to go to Brazil. Yes? I'm not too sure. Was it before or after you interviewed the three social workers, or, excuse me, they interviewed you? I'm not too sure, but I believe. Well, you left Neverland. Your Honor, he's answering the question. Pardon me, pardon me. Go ahead. I believe we went to Calabasas after, I think it was after the social workers. So you went to Calabasas after the interview with the social workers, right? Yes. The interview with the social workers was at Jay Jackson's apartment, right? Yes. And Vinny took you to Calabasas, correct? Yes. You stayed at the Calabasas Inn, right? Vinny and Frank took us there. Yes. You went right to the Calabasas Inn from the interview, right? No. Where did you go after the interview? Asja took us up to Neverland. And you had a discussion. The plans for Brazil were already being discussed, weren't they? Not with me. Well, you'd heard about it? I don't know if I had. Well, let me just ask you this. 
you complained after the Bashir documentary that people in the schoolyard were making fun of you, correct? Yes. You went to Florida right after that? Yes. You came back, right? Yes. There were media around your house, right? I can't, I don't know, because I didn't even, from Miami I went to Neverland. Well, the DCFS interview, the interview with the social workers, had to do with an investigation of Mr. Jackson, true? Yes, and as a result of the Martin Bashir documentary. Yes, and you went to Calabasas after that, right? No, I went up with Asja to Neverland. How long were you at Neverland then? Your Honor, excuse me, the witness didn't get a chance to finish his answer. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. After, after the DCSF, we went up to Neverland with Asja. Yes. Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, there were plans in effect to take you to Brazil, right? I don't know, I'm not sure if I knew about them at that time. So what you're telling the jury is that after you were interviewed by three social workers investigating Michael Jackson and after all the commotion that followed the Bashir documentary, somehow Mr. Jackson starts to improperly touch you, correct? No, it was more toward the end. Toward when we were already about to leave, after we'd been drinking alcohol and all that stuff. It wasn't directly after the DCSF. It was more toward the end of the... So right before you're supposed to leave to Brazil? No, right before we left Neverland. Oh, right before you left Neverland for good? No, right before, maybe a few days. A few days before you left Neverland for good? Yes, because, yeah. Okay, so it's actually a little bit after the interview with the social workers, then, right? Maybe it's a little bit after. And it's probably, I don't think it happened right, like, it didn't happen, like, the day, like, he did it, and then the day after, we left. I don't think it happened like that. But it's right before you leave Neverland for good, right? Maybe a week before, or something like that. Okay, okay, and you've already had the interview with the social workers, as you said, right? Yes. You've already been to the Calabasas Inn, right? Yes. And you've already left the Calabasas Inn and gone by the Laugh Factory and met with an attorney, right? I believe so. So after you meet with an attorney, you suddenly come up with a story that you were masturbated by Michael Jackson, correct? Object. Argumentative, Your Honor. No, because. Excuse me. Overruled. You can go ahead and answer. Correct. No, because I did not tell the attorney anything about what Michael was doing. But you're saying it started after. Yes, I did not tell the attorney anything about alcohol or anything like that. Okay, okay. Vinny takes you, your mom, and star to the Laugh Factory on Sunset, correct? Yes. You and your mom get out of the car, right? Yes. You go into the Laugh Factory on Sunset, correct? Yes. You meet with Jamie Masada and an attorney named William Dickerman, correct? Yes. You have a meeting with the two of them, right? Yes. You come back, you get in the car, right? Yes. You go back to Neverland, right? I think we did. And then you leave Neverland again, right? I don't know, I think, I guess. And not long after your meeting with the attorney, you say that Mr. Jackson inappropriately masturbates you, true? No, because I didn't really say it right after I met him. I didn't. It was a while after you met him, right? Yeah. That's when the inappropriate touching starts? I didn't. The only person I said it to was to my psychologist, Dr. Katz, and the officer, Steve Robel, and Paul Zellis, that's. We'll get to that. You first went to attorney Larry Feldman after attorney William Dickerman, correct? Yes. And attorney Larry Feldman then referred you to a psychologist, right? Yes. When you first went to attorney William Dickerman, you were talking about being harassed and things of that sort, correct? I, I don't remember what I talked about. Well, you met with him with your mom, true? Yes. And then you and your mom met with Larry Feldman, right? Yes. It was only after you met with Larry Feldman that you started talking about inappropriate touching, true? I didn't talk, I didn't randomly talk about it with people. Well, I didn't ask if you randomly talked about it. 
I asked if you talked about it? Who are you specifying that I talked about it to? Larry Feldman, whom you knew had sued Michael Jackson in the early 90s, right? No, I did not tell anything like that to Larry Feldman. The only person I told anything even resolving, sick, to that was Dr. Katz. And I told the whole story to Steve Robel and Paul Zellis. But, no, you first went to the two lawyers, a psychologist, before you went to any police officer, true? I'm going to object as argumentative by saying, no, in the beginning. I'll rephrase it, if you want, your honor. All right. You went to two lawyers, and a psychologist whom Larry Feldman referred you to, before you went to any police officer, right? Yes. Now, these weren't the first attorneys you've ever talked to, correct? I've talked to other people, other attorneys before. Well, you had an attorney representing you in the J.C. Penney case, correct? I think so, I'm pretty sure. You testified under oath in that case, correct? Yes. Did you tell the truth under oath in that case? Of course. Didn't tell one solitary lie? No. You said that security guards had body slammed your mother in a parking lot? Your Honor, I'm going to object. 403 ruling. Sustained. How many days? Just a couple of days before you left Neverland for good, you're saying this inappropriate touching went on. No, I said probably, maybe a week or two couple of days. You said a couple days before, didn't you? No, I said maybe a week or two. Well, but after you went with the lawyer, though, right? Object as argumentative, your honor. All right, it's asked and answered. I'll rephrase. That, too. Now, you told the jury yesterday that Michael Jackson didn't do much for your cancer, correct? Yes. Was that a true statement? Yeah because I didn't see him much. He would tell me that he wasn't there, when he was there at the ranch. And it made me really sad, because in my mind, he was my best friend in the whole world, and my best friend was trying to avoid me while I had cancer. Did Michael Jackson call you at the hospital while you had cancer? Yes, he called me and invited me up to the ranch. He talked to you a lot in the hospital, didn't he? No. Do you remember telling the police in your first interview? You were asked the question, and did you talk to him a lot while you were in the hospital? A. I talked to him a lot. Like, he would call and I'd call him and stuff, and we'd just talk about, like, video games. Do you remember that? Yeah, I probably meant lengthy conversation as in time. You were then asked, how often did he call you? I don't know, but I think it was probably at least three times a week or something. Do you remember that? Yeah, including outside of the hospital. My grandmother's house. But that's not what you told the sheriffs, was it? You told him that he called you approximately three times a week? Excuse me. He's not even giving the witness a chance to answer the question. I thought he answered the question. You're cutting him off. I apologize. Pardon me. Let's go over it again. You told Santa Barbara sheriffs in your first interview, Mr. Arvizo that Michael Jackson called you about three times a week at the hospital and you would talk for two or three hours at a time, correct? Yeah, during the, probably during the period of when, in the beginning, of the first few, two months of my cancer where I was actually going and hanging out with Michael. And after those two months, it was all cut off. Did you tell the Santa Barbara sheriffs that when you were in the hospital with cancer? Uh-huh. Michael Jackson would call you at least three times a week, and speak to you for an hour two hours or three hours at a time? Michael would call me during the, probably, during the beginning of my cancer, probably three times a week. And I would call him and we would talk for a long time. We would talk about video games. We would talk about people he knew, people I knew, stuff like that. In the hospital, right? Sometimes he would call me in the hospital. I'd like to explore your statement to the jury that he didn't do much to you. Much for you when you had cancer? Okay. You've just talked about the calls, right? Yeah. He invites your family to his home, correct? He invited us to Neverland in the beginning, yeah. He lets your family stay at his home for weeks, correct? Yeah. He gives you a car to use, true? Yes, same car he takes back in the middle of the time that I really needed a, that my family needed a car. 
gives your family an SUV so they can go back and forth to the hospital, right? Yes. Gives you a computer, right? Yes. Flies your family to Florida and lets them stay at a resort for two nights, right? No, he took me to Florida in result of the Martin Bashir documentary that was being aired. Did your family stay at the resort hotel called Turnberry in Florida? Michael put us up in the resort, in the Turnberry. Did you get a massage? Yes. Chris Tucker paid for that massage. Okay. Did you get a massage? Yes. Chris Tucker paid for that massage. Did you get a watch? Yes. From Mr. Jackson? Yes. Did you get a jacket from Mr. Jackson? Yes. Did your family go back and forth and stay at Neverland free? Everyone stays at Neverland for free. Well, who do you think pays the bills? Object is argumentative, your honor. Well, on both parts. Let's start another question. Don't. Mr. Arvizo. Just a minute. I'm sorry. I'll instruct both the witness and the attorney not to argue with each other. Mr. Arvizo, your family would stay for weeks free of charge at Neverland, true? Yes. Your meals would be paid by, for by Mr. Jackson, true? Probably, yes. Do you know someone else that paid for it? No, but I was pretty sure it was Michael. You would travel by limousine back and forth, true? Yes. You also traveled by Rolls Royce on occasion, true? No, I only traveled in a Rolls Royce when I was escaping from Neverland with Jesus. When you were escaping? Yes. And you went back. How long after you escaped did you go back there again? I think a few days later, when Vinny and Frank came down. Okay, okay. When you escaped, where did Jesus take you? He took me to my grandmother's house. And then two days later you went back with Vinny? I don't know about two days, but maybe a few days. So you went back, and then you escaped a second time, right? I think so, whatever. And then you went back and you escaped a third time, right? No. Well, there were like three escapes, weren't there? I don't know. Okay. Have you ever talked to Mr. Snedden about how many times you people went back voluntarily and then escaped from Neverland? Mr. Snedden. Yes? I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. When you were at Neverland, you would use the amusement park when you wanted, correct? Yes. But, well, I couldn't always do it because I would feel sick all the time. Well. With cancer. Who do you think paid the utilities to run all the amusement rides at Neverland? Probably Michael. And you would use the zoo when you wanted, correct? No, because I wouldn't go to the zoo. Michael would take us over there when he wanted to take us over there, and we'd see the tigers. Who do you think was paying for all of that? Michael, because Michael wanted all that in his house. Oh, and do you think he was really being good to you by letting you stay there and go to the zoo, the amusement rides? He probably was. But, I mean, this is talking about the first few months. And I don't really, see, Mr. Mezzaro, it takes more. Objection. Your Honor. Could he just answer the question? Sustained. Just answer the question. Did you use ATVs at Neverland? Yes. Yes. Who paid for the ATVs? I'm pretty sure Michael paid for the ATVs. What else did you do at Neverland when you used to hang out there with your brother, your sister, your father, your mother? Probably be in my unit, because I was sick. Was there a blood drive for you at Neverland? Yeah. And Mr. Jackson put that together, didn't he? Probably. You don't know? No, I heard something about a blood drive, but I can't really remember too much about it. You don't remember a blood drive at Neverland that Mr. Jackson put together for you when you had cancer? I remember. I remember something about my friend. My friend had come down to the hospital and told me about it, but I don't, I remember something about a blood drive, but I'm not too sure about it. He, I'm pretty sure he did. Now, I believe you told the jury yesterday you thought George Lopez did more for you when you had cancer than Michael Jackson, correct? Yeah, for my 11-year-old mind, he came and visited me and would always talk to me and buy me shirts and stuff. Did Mr. Lopez let your family move into his home? Object is argumentative, your honor. 
Sustained. Mr. Arvizo. Did Mr. Lopez give you a Rolls Royce for your family to ride around town in? No. Did he provide limousines for your family to ride around town in? No. Did he pay a lot of your bills so your family could stay at hotels? I don't know. That's up to my. Did he pay for flights so your family could go cross country? I'm pretty sure he did, to pay for us to go to Miami. How many times do you think your family visited Neverland and stayed there? Every time Michael wanted us to. But you went there many times when Michael wasn't even there, right, Mr. Arvizo? Only with Michael's permission. Did you and your family go to Neverland and stay many times when Michael Jackson wasn't even around? I would. Not my whole family. Me and my father would. Because in the first two months of my cancer, when I was, when I thought I was pretty close to Michael, I would go up there and stay with him between my rounds of chemotherapy. Can you look this jury in eye and tell them Michael Jackson did nothing for you when you had cancer? I never said Michael did nothing for me. Did you say he did very little? Yeah, he didn't do as much as I felt, as my 11-year-old mind felt. He should? No, he shouldn't, it's not his obligation to do anything. Well, are you telling the jury you deserved a lot more from Michael Jackson than you and your family got? No. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying that, see, when I have a friend, Michael, and you're saying all these things that he did, but, you know, when my 11-year-old mind, and when I see my friend say that he's not there, and he's not at Neverland Ranch trying, and I see him walking and I see his car that he only drives going down at Neverland, you know, it felt like my heart broke right there. So by doing all of these things. And I don't remember George Lopez or Jamie Masada or Louise Palenker ever doing that to me. Did they take your family into their homes, any of them? Actually, I went over to, actually, I spent a night at Chris Tucker's house. Did he let your family move into his home, yes or no? I'm sure he probably would have if we really got to a point where we couldn't live at our house no more. There isn't one celebrity that you approached who let your family move into his home, except Michael Jackson, true? I didn't. Excuse me, I'm going to object to the question. Assumes a fact not in evidence, and it's argumentative. Overruled. I never moved into Michael's house. I never moved my stuff over there and lived there permanently. I stood there and visited. Your family was there for weeks at a time, correct? Yes, and they also kept us there for weeks at a time when we wanted to leave. Is this one of your many escapes where you came back? Object as argumentative, your honor. Sustained. I withdraw it, your honor. Mr. Arvizo, when your family decided not to go to Brazil, where did they go? What do you mean? Well, when your family decided they didn't want to go to Brazil, they went to your grandparents' house, right? When we left with Jesus, we went to my grandma's house. I don't really understand. When you left with Vinny for the final time, you went to your grandparents, right? I don't really, as I told Mr. Sneddon, I don't really remember how it came about that we left the last time. I'm not asking you how it came about. But you got in a car with Vinny and went to your grandparents the last time? I now you're telling, right now you're telling me how it came about. I don't know how it came about. Do you recall Vinny taking your family to your grandparents when you left Neverland for good? No, because I do not remember what happened when we left for the last time. Do you remember leaving for the last time at all? I know that we left, because I remember, I went to my grandma's house. When you say you escaped with Jesus, where did you escape to? We went to my grandma's house. Jesus took you in a Rolls Royce to your grandma's house, right? Yes. When your family wanted to leave, they left, right? Object. Argumentative. Overruled. Can you repeat the question? When your family wanted to leave Neverland, you either had a limousine or a Rolls Royce take you where you wanted to go, right? No, it wasn't a limousine, and we never left in a limousine, because when we left it was when they didn't really know. It was a Rolls Royce, wasn't it? Yes, because that was the only car available. It wasn't as if we told Jesus to take us in a Rolls Royce. Okay. It was a vehicle, an automobile that we can use to leave. Has any lawyer told you what to say in this courtroom? No. Has any lawyer ever told you what to say under oath? No. 
Remember, your deposition was taken in the J.C. Penney case? Yes, it was taken when I had cancer, because I was unable to show up at the court case. And that was when you and your mom were suing J.C. Penney, correct? I believe it was my whole family that was suing them. Did a lawyer tell you what to say in that case? No. Remember, you said under oath, did anyone tell you what you should testify about here today or how you should say things, and your answer was, only our lawyer. What? Do you remember saying that in the J.C. Penney deposition? No. Would it refresh your recollection if I just show that to you? Uh, sure, I guess. May I approach, your honor? Yes. Have you had a chance to review that page of your deposition in the J.C. Penney case? Yes. Remember testifying that a lawyer had told you what to say? They didn't tell us what to say. Huh? They didn't tell us what to say. But that's what you said when you had your deposition taken, right? They probably, I don't know, because, I mean, I was eight years old. And I don't really remember what was going on. You were ten years old, right? Maybe, ten years old probably at the deposition. But, I mean, I was eight years old when it happened. Did you and your mom talk about the facts of that case before your deposition was taken? No, I don't think we were allowed to. So you never discussed it with your mom before the deposition was taken? No. Have you ever talked about the facts of this case with your mother? No, I don't think we're allowed to either. So you've never discussed the facts of this case with your mother? Um, no. Have you ever discussed the Bashir documentary with your mother? Yeah. When? We had talked about it with her sometimes, like how I felt about what I said on there. And when did you last discuss the Bashir documentary with your mother? I do not remember. Pardon me? I don't remember. Okay. We've come to the end of the day. Thank you, Your Honor. We're going to do something different. Everyone remain seated, please. Take the jury and the witness out. I'll see you all Monday. Bye. The following proceedings were held in open court outside the presence and hearing of the jury smiley face. I just didn't want to say this in front of the jury. This morning I issued a warrant for Mr. Jackson's arrest and held it for an hour. The warrant is recalled. The court also forfeited Mr. Jackson's bail at the request of Mr. Jackson. His bonding company has agreed to resume the liability on the bond and has given the court permission to reinstate the bond. The court therefore reinstates the bond as previously, as previously filed and orders that the reinstatement be filed with the court. Courts in recess. Thank you.